What's up guys? Shade Tree Surgeon here with a special release talking about the very anticipated and up until now completely unseen Indian FTR 1200. You guys might remember a video I did a while back on this where I talked about the Indian FTR 1200 and how if this bike gets made it could completely change the way that American motorcycles are perceived in the world. Finally, once again, we'll have an American motorcycle that is born from racing. Polaris is putting real dollars into their flat track program and it's really heartening to see it actually produce a street legal motorcycle. Man, that's the way motorcycles ought to be. Win on Sunday, sell on Monday. That saying used to apply to American motorcycles, but it really hasn't in quite some time. Harley Davidson has always been really good about putting money into the race community, but it's almost never translated into a motorcycle we could actually buy. And honestly, it looked like Indian and Polaris were pretty much following suit because yes, while they were putting money into a factory race team, when you walked into the dealership, it was nothing but totally obnoxious Harley wannabe baggers with factory fringe. Not exactly breaking the mold here. The distinction between a fully dressed Harley Davidson Street Glide and a maxed out Indian Roadmaster is an exercise in the narcissism of small differences. You can quibble ad infinitum over perceived advantages and small differences between these two land barges all you want. What it really comes down to is whose t-shirt do you want to be wearing when you walk into the bar? Do you want to join the cult of Harley Davidson and find safety in numbers. To be instantly recognized as one of those guys and spray on that increasingly ever diluted cologne that 100% assures everybody that you, you might indeed be a badass, you know, especially when viewed through the magnifying glass of a minivan windshield. Or do you choose outside the sphere and revel in the perceived free will of India? Manufactured rebellion in an easy to swallow pill form, guaranteed to set you just far enough apart to satisfy that swollen ego. At the end of the day, Harley and Indian are selling the same motorcycle, just with different identities attached to them. And personally, I've always counted that as a strike against Polaris and Indian rather than one against Harley Davidson. After all, that perennial batwing fairing that you see on Harley. Harley Davidson and that has been copied by literally everyone who wants a crumb off that Harley cookie. Harley Davidson's been putting that fairing on their bike since the 1960s. Hell man, even the fixed fairing of the Road Glide dates all the way back to 1979. Love him or hate him, Harley Davidson's fully fared bagger lineup has got a pedigree. The Indian bagger's heritage is 100% manufactured, and in my opinion, trying to beat life into the dead horse of the Indian that was does nothing but detract from the Indian that could be. Enter the Indian FTR 1200, just the breath of fresh air that American motorcycles needed. Of course, Harley-Davidson definitely stole a little bit of that thunder back with the announcement of their own sport bike street fighter concept, and personally, I can't wait for that inevitable shootout. I digress. We're talking about Indian. So back to the FTR 1200. While the FTR concept that we've seen was shown to be a fully functional motorcycle with the requisite wheelies and power slides and Indian's promotional video, it is still just a concept. The bike is a completely one-off motorcycle. While the fit and finish on this concept certainly looks to meet or probably even exceed what you'd expect to see on a production model, we all know deep down that this is not the bike that we're gonna see on the showroom floor. The big question is, how far are they going to stray from the original concept? It's gonna have to get ironed out a little bit just to take into account both emissions and safety standards 
parameters, not to mention price. Trust me, man, I love all that carbon fiber we see on the FTR concept, but when I look at this bike, I see a luxury item with a Ducati price tag, not a street brawler that I'm gonna feel okay thrashing half to death. So are we in for a major letdown here or what? Let's take a look at a picture of what I assume is going to be the FTR 1200 production model. This is very obviously not an official photo from Indian, so I can't 100% say for certain that this is what the bike's gonna look like, but it's a pretty safe guess. Whatever this bike might be, and I certainly think that it is the FTR 1200 production model, it's pretty safe to say that it is a production model, mostly judging from those chintzy little stick-on reflectors on the forks. Those aren't exactly something that you usually stick on concept bikes. And first impressions are, man, that is not the same bike. When I first saw this, I'll be honest, my heart sank just because it's such a pale imitation of the FTR concept. This is the Duplo to the concept's Lego. Chunkier and hard to swallow with all the sharp edges dulled down for mass consumption. If the FTR concept is a razor blade, then this bike is a neon pink set of safety scissors. I really think what we have here is a situation where the concept was so good that it's actually gonna end up hurting Indian. Now, we'll never know the truth, but according to Indian, the FTR would have never been built if the concept FTR hadn't have done so well and became so popular. If they never planned to make this bike before the concept became so popular, it actually really explains a lot. Because if they had planned it from the beginning, you'd think that they'd make a concept bike that was a little bit closer to what the finished product was going to look like. Maybe they really did have an unexpected hit on their hands and did the best they could. And I'll tell you, when I look at this picture of the production bike and I don't think about the FTR concept bike, it really starts to look a whole lot better. Yeah, it's definitely chunkier. There ain't no getting around that. But how much gas could the tank on the concept bike possibly hold, and would we have really been satisfied with a two gallon tank on a production version of this motorcycle? The seat is huge in comparison, but once again, custom motorcycles aren't designed to be comfortable riding all day long, and this bike, you're going to want that, and you're also going to want to be able to take a passenger. And even if you don't want any of those things, it looks as though it wouldn't be that hard to fit a custom tail section on this bike. And I'm sure there's some bulk that's added to make room for electronics and ABS and everything else that goes into making a bike like this sturdy enough to put up with thousands upon thousands of miles of potholes and speed bumps, stuff that a custom concept bike will never have to put up with. I'll tell you one difference I am actually really happy about is when you look at the front wheel and I see big old dual brim bows up there instead of the single disc that we see on the concept bike. And probably the most notable difference is the absence of the high pipes that we see on the concept motorcycle. We're still looking at a stylized exhaust on the production version, but it looks like hot garbage compared to what we saw on the concept bike. But hey, come on man, most stock exhaust systems on motorcycles both look and sound like garbage. We know that in this exhaust they're going to have to make room for a catalytic converter, they're going to have to have O2 sensors, they're going to have to keep the DB level low enough to make it street legal. These are all things that you have to take into account when you're making a production street legal motorcycle versus an off-road only concept. But if Indian takes yet another page out of Harley's handbook, half of these FTR bikes are going to have off-road only exhaust installed on them by the dealers before they're ever even sold. One thing I'm also very, very curious about, and you can't really tell by the picture, is how far to one side that rear shock is mounted. And I, I wonder if we're looking at a dual shock setup, much like the Scout. When you look at this rear shock and you look 
look at a Scout's rear shock, they share what looks to be a very similar geometry. Obviously, we're just looking at pictures here, so I don't know, but that could be worrying because that would make me think that they borrowed a lot more from the Scout's frame than they're letting on, but only time will tell. But besides all that, in my opinion, if you take the concept bike out of the room, what you're left with is a damn fine looking Ducati. I mean Indian, Indian, a, a damn fine looking Indian. All jokes aside, this looks like a Ducati that somebody slapped an Indian sticker on. Of course, to be fair, it's hard to see any V-twin powered naked Street Fighter style bike with big old super sport front brakes and what I hope are shiny gold Oleans and not immediately think Ducati. And just to give credit where credit is due, yes, Triumph pretty much invented the Street Fighter category, or at least the production Street Fighter category in the early 90s with the Speed Triple. But regardless, the Ducati monster will always be the poster child of that genre. Add in the fact that that V-twin engine has a bright red trellis frame sitting on top of it and the comparisons are both inevitable and deserved. I'm certainly not saying that the Ducati resemblance is a bad thing, but let's call a spade a spade. With this motorcycle, Indian is dancing a very fine line between inspired by and copied from. I'd be totally willing to bet that if you debadged this motorcycle and showed it to your average Joe who didn't know much about motorcycles, his immediate guess would be that it's a Ducati. Of course, that's just my opinion. I'd love to hear yours. What do you think about this motorcycle. Hell, do you even think that this is actually a picture of what's going to be the production FTR 1200? And if you do believe that, how close do you think they got to the concept? Do you think they did it justice or not? If you were one of the thousands of people who shouted loudly that they couldn't wait to buy this motorcycle, do you feel the same way? when you look at this motorcycle. Make sure to leave a comment and let me know what you think. I'm actually really curious myself and I always read every single comment that I've left. And I'm really not trying to sound cool here, but I would not be surprised at all if somebody from Indian ends up reading all these comments too. I haven't seen this picture anywhere else besides the Motorbike Writer's blog. I can't find a single other picture that looks like it and literally nobody nobody's talking about it. I can't really imagine that Indian is super happy that this picture exists, so they're probably gonna be watching any activity around it pretty closely. So like I said, leave a comment down below and I'd say that it actually has a pretty fair chance of being read by somebody from Indian. That being said, if you like this video, make sure to leave a like on it for me. And if you're new to the Shade Tree Surgeon channel, make sure to hit subscribe if you like this video and you want to see more like it. I release two new videos every week, sometimes three when I'm feeling sassy. Stay tuned, I got a lot of good stuff coming down the pipe. Until next time, keep it weird, y'all.